today's video topic, the pros and cons of buying a house next to a school. And for those of you who don't know me, I am a retired school teacher in the New York City area. I've worked in the school systems for over 27 years, so I know a lot about the pros and cons outside the building as well as inside the system. However, as a realtor, I can't get into talking about the inside of the schools, but I am allowed to talk about what goes on outside in the area in regards to traffic and things of that nature. So let's get right into it right now. Let's start with some basic pros. Number one, buyers with school-age kids like the convenience of being a short distance away from their school. It gives them the ability to take their kids to school, particularly when they're running late. They just pack a bag out the door and they're into their elementary school right down the block or across the street. That's definitely a big plus convenience and a lot of buyers are looking for that convenience with school age kids, either for now or in the near future. Number two, schools usually have parks, whether you're in the urban area where there's a lot of blacktop type parks with basketball courts, the old jungle gym type things. Uh, and sprinkler systems in the city system for the you know summer sports type or summer sprinklers to cool off. That is a big draw for a lot of people with school-aged children. They like that availability. And for those of you who don't know, in New York City schools, there's not many middle or elementary schools with tracks on them. The space is uh, at a premium, so that's usually at the high school level where there are tracks, and even all well, high schools don't have tracks in the city limits as well. Out on Long Island or out in the suburbs, every school, even at the elementary level, to some extent have a track, definitely have some green space and a lot of extra things to take advantage of. And that's a plus. Understand, there's only 100, approximately 181 days in a school year. So all these things might be a negative now. Negatives pretty much go away when school's out for the season. Number three, attracts people who want to be close to the school. We just mentioned that. So marketability. If you have people that want to live near a school for all the reasons that I'm outlining now, it's definitely going to increase your market value somewhat because you're going to be pulling people who fit into that category of wanting to be next to the school. It's all about supply and demand. You have a reason why people want to live there, and that will bring up your marketability of your property. Number four. Most schools offer adult education programs. So if you live within the proximity or close to a school, you can take advantage of those adult education programs. And that's always a plus, again, for marketability. Also understanding some schools have summer programs. Another thing to consider, and we're getting into the cons right now, traffic. Traffic was always a major problem. As a teacher driving to school and looking for a parking spot, we took whatever spot was available. So if you were a homeowner in that area, the spots were sparse. They were gone during school hours most of the day. A couple of things to remember, the difference. Long Island schools are out in the suburbs. The regulations weren't as strict, but I will tell you there were plenty of places on Long Island or in the suburbs where you're not allowed to park directly around the school during school hours, during school days. So that can be from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, it was a no parking zone. Both a good thing and a bad thing, depending upon how you want to look at it. In the city system, you can have alternate side of the street parking, which already cuts your parking in half, where you weren't allowed to park in certain areas on certain days. And then you could have no parking uh, except for certain vehicles in front of the schools. And it just became a major parking issue. I usually had to park about a mile away. So I got two miles of walking in every day. That was great for the exercise, but it really wasn't a good thing in inclement weather. So that's something to understand. Parking can definitely be an issue. Twice a day, you have buses pulling in and you have parents pulling in with their kids in the car. So traffic became very congested. Something to think about. Very congested twice a day if there's after school programs, sporting events, um, P uh, the parent teach conferences. Those were always times where the streets became very uh, crowded and there were a lot of people in the neighborhood. And for some, that's a plus. For others, they might not like that type of scenario. So that's something to consider. It's definitely personal choice. Another thing to consider is if you're in a city zone or an area where the school does not have its own parking, again, I mentioned this earlier in the cons, that the staff is going to be taking up some of the parking spaces in your area. So that's something to think about, particularly if your house you're considering purchasing does not have a driveway. Now, that might be a little um, 
unusual for people who don't live in a city system. But inside the city limits, there are plenty of private houses that do not have their own garages or own parking spots. So that's something to consider. Now, will it increase your marketability? Well, understand this. Every buyer is unique. Most people with young kids want to be close to the schools. People with middle and elementary age kids are more district driven. And when I talk about districts, I want you to understand that the old question or a question that a lot of realtors get um, asked is, I want to be next to a good school system. How do I know what a good school system is? Well, I can tell you as a teacher, I have a lot of information that I can share. But as a realtor, I'm not allowed to discuss anything about schools. I can tell you I do have another video that I'm going to include a link down on the bottom where you can find out more. Basically, in that video, I'm telling you where to go look, how to go find out about those schools, but there's not much realtors can tell you. So bottom line, it comes down to watch the video and find out the tips. They'll definitely be helpful in helping you figure out how to find out how the school systems are. So I hope this was helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit the um, to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you can get notified when new videos come up. This is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes, and I'll see you next time.